In this video, I'm going to be going over sea monsters in the Bible and in the ancient cultures, and I'm going to bring up transmigration and kind of reincarnation a little bit, maybe creation stories, okay, ancient creation stories, including the one in the Bible. And I'm going to explain to you how God uses this to explain a lot of things. All right, so I'm going to be going over Tiamat. Leviathan, and Rahab, and transmigration. And how ultimately this represents the body of Christ and the body of Satan on earth. Okay, so before reincarnation was a thing, there was transmigration. Transmigration, if you go look it up, it's going to give you a lot of reincarnation stuff because that's where reincar the thinking of reincarnation came from. All right. Um, this might surprise you, but... Christians believe in transmigration. I will explain why. All right. It's when body parts. Okay. This, and I'm going to bring into why how these dragons represent body parts. Okay. And kingdoms. It's when body parts of a dead, big, dead giant, usually a dragon, equals it makes up the land and the sky and it makes up people. Okay. And God uses this. All right. So. In the ancient world, everyone has this story, all right? Everyone. This is before reincarnation was a thing, and the Bible talks about it too. It's when, first of all, God uses this concept. When Adam made Eve, he took a body part from Adam, his rib, and made another person, all right? He made Eve from Adam's rib. That's a body part turning into a new person, all right? But in the ancient world, these dragons represented these body parts. And these giants, okay. In the <clears throat> in the Babylonian, Assyrian, Akkadian creation story, all right, the Mesopotamia gods. What happened is in their own story, Tiamat was Tiamat was a god, okay, and she gave birth to her these other gods, all right. And in their creation story, the hero slays the dragon, all right. And sometimes the hero is Inky, sometimes the hero is Marduk. And the Greeks just took the whole story and that their hero is Hercules. And Ugaritic, the hero was Baal, okay? The hero who slays the dragon, all right? And what does the hero do with the body part? He tears up the dragon and makes up the land and the sky. And sometimes even the body parts turn into humans, okay? That's even in the German creation story, and it's so weird because they're always related, or they're brothers, or they're parent, or they're mother and mother and son. Okay, they're always related. They come from the same family. It's the reason why I'm saying that. In the Hindu religion, it's Brahma. Okay, in this case, he tears up a big giant plant, though. Okay, he tears up the big giant plant, and he makes the earth and the heaven and the skies with it. This hero tears apart an animal or a plant sometimes and makes up the heavens. All right, same exact concept. Okay, so I'm going to get in a little bit into Antichrist philosophy. Okay, what does Antichrist mean? It's not just about a man coming at the end of the world destroying everyone. Okay, it's a big, a big philosophy. All right, there's lots of philosophy with what the Antichrist spirit is. Whenever, what does Christ mean? It means savior, right? Whenever you hear a story about a man or a God saving everyone that isn't Christ, that's antichrist philosophy. Baal is an antichrist philosophy. Marduk is antichrist philosophy. Inky is antichrist philosophy. Brahma is antichrist philosophy. And Odin is antichrist philosophy. These are supposedly heroes that saved everyone and made everyone okay the real story is god of the, the god of the bible made everyone okay he's the one who made you all right and so god uh the reason why everyone has the same creation story is because the oral traditions of what happened in the garden of eden because it really did happen went all over the world and people started adding in their own crap Okay, and started making up their own stuff, and so that's when it becomes twisted the twisted version of the oral tradition of God. 
alright? Because what happened in the Garden of Eden really happened, alright? That's why everyone has the exact same story, alright? They have the exact same story. Even in the Native American creation stories, there's a, a story about a man and a woman, and and it's, it's, it's like the exact same story. He was made out of clay, okay? Because the oral traditions of what really happened went all over the earth because it really happened and the stupid thing is God did that on purpose so you know it really happened the reason why he had the Bible come out later is so you would know this really happened because people weren't just ripping it off from the Bible all right the thing is people are so evil they do the opposite they say well the Jews were just ripping off stories from these ripping off stories from these cultures and making up their own stuff no okay that is not what happened the truth is, this stuff was ripped off from God in the first place. That's why everyone has the same story. But you can go and believe what you want, but I'm warning you, you're, there's going to be repercussions if you don't choose the God of the Bible. Okay? Irish. Even in the Irish creation story, or the Irish traditions, before the Bible came out, they had an oral tradition of this man named Noah. Okay? <laughs> and his descendants traveled, and it made Ireland. Okay? Because do you know why? Because it really happened. It's not just a stupid fantasy story. Alright? Anyway, but did, did, did these people know that? No. They just think that they're, they're, they're the first culture to ever think of this. Like, everyone thinks that they're so original. Like, my culture believes in this creation story with his body parts. And I'm like, yeah, everyone thinks that. Okay? And the thing is, God uses his, his own creation story again to bring people out of the false creation stories. Alright? Do you get what I'm saying? Alright. The thing is, if you don't believe in the Bible, you can't help people. Okay? The less you think... this is the, These stories are... God uses these stories as metaphors, but they literally happen. I believe, literally, that Adam... Literally, a rib came out and made a person, okay? And the oral traditions of that went all over. That's why everyone has the same creation story. I know I keep repeating myself, but it's very important that you don't doubt the Bible, all right? Even historians who are recognizing these stories are all the same are saying there must be an original story somewhere because how in the world can all these people have the same exact stories over and over again? It's because there is an original story. It's the Bible story. Just because the Bible was written later doesn't mean it didn't happen first. God did that on purpose so you would know that the Bible really happened. Okay? Because these people were actually there. Oral traditions of Noah and Adam and Eve. Because it really happened and it went all over the earth. Okay. Anyway. Alright. So. This Lotan figure in the Ugaritic story, in the Mesopotamia story too, this Lotan is where we get the word Leviathan. Okay, this is seven seven-headed sea beast. It's usually a sea monster, but sometimes it has legs. Okay, it has legs of a lion because they're mixed up. They're mixed up with body parts of the lion. Okay, so this Lotan figure is where we get the word Leviathan. Does the does the Bible talk about Leviathan having seven heads or Lotan having seven heads? Of course. This is in Psalm 74. Thou didst divide the, the, the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragon in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and givest him to be meat to the people. So this is again talking about tearing, a, tearing the dragon apart and making up the bodies of water. Okay. It's the same story, okay? It's similar stories. And also this is explaining that Leviathan has me multiple heads. So Lotan is definitely a Leviathan. Alright? Obviously, this is you're supposed to relate this to the seven-headed beast in the book of Revelation. Okay, everyone knows if they do a simple study that these beasts represent nations. But they also represent the people. Okay? They represent the, the body parts of the people. And also, these heads represent so many different things. God uses one image to explain 10,000 other things, okay? These heads represent Antichrist figures, okay? I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, what about Tiamat? Does the Bible mention Tiamat? Yes, but you have to do a language study, okay? When it says dragons, or when it says the deep, or sea monsters, it'll... 
sometimes translates, translated into Tananin, which is the Hebrew equivalent for Tiamat. Okay, so it refers to these things in the Bible, to these specifically, but you have to do a language study. Tiamat and Tananin is, is the same thing. All right. What about Rahab? I'm going to talk about Rahab a little bit more right now because so little is known about what Rah- who Rahab is or, or what Rahab is because it just translates into sea monster again. Okay. Some sort of sea monster with several heads or something. I'm going to give you a theory. I don't know if it's true. I can only go by what some people have said because they have ha- claimed to have seen what this thing is. Okay, in dreams or something. Okay, and from what I understand, again, I'm not preaching this as a, I'm not teaching this as truth. This is just a theory. Okay, Rahab is more of an octopus, squid, sea monster. Okay, so instead of having multiple heads, it has multiple legs. It's like the opposite of of Leviathan. Okay, and there's probably a lot of there is a lot of philosophy behind that, which I might get to in a minute, but. Like the Kraken. The Kraken is probably a consort of Rahab, alright? So another thing I wanted to bring up, what is up with these sea creatures? Okay, why? So back then, being in the sea was very, it's a chaos theory. To live in the sea was dangerous. You can't live in the sea and that's where these things are, okay? These things are referred to as the devil because you can't live with, they are in a realm. God refers to these things as devils for many reasons, okay? But you can't be with, you're not supposed to be with them in the sea because you can't live there, right? You'll die, all right? They live in a different realm that doesn't, that you shouldn't be in, all right? That's why they're called sea monsters. They live in a world of chaos that you shouldn't be involved in, all right? And I believe God uses the anatomy, even if these things aren't technically real. Obviously, there's not real dragons flying everywhere. But you have to go into the mythology and God will explain things to you. For example, Leviathan and Rahab and Tiamat, okay, especially if they're sea creatures in some myths, okay, they are hydras. What is a hydra? A hydra is a dragon, okay, that can grow extra body parts, okay? If you cut off a head of a hydra, it just grows more heads, two more heads, okay? There's lots of philosophy behind that. Or, or if you cut the foot off of a octopus, it, the octopus will just grow another leg, okay? And I think that's very interesting that all these, cr- these animals are unclean animals because... A philosophy behind why they're unclean is because they grow extra body parts. Alright? Okay, so, what's the philosophy behind that? First of all, you can't live in the sea because you don't belong there. But, I'm going to use the Pope as an example as one of the heads of of Leviathan. You can't kill a Pope, okay? I'm not- obviously murder is a sin, even if you think these people are evil, okay? You're not supposed to physically harm anyone, alright? I am talking about spiritual warfare. If the Pope dies, another head is just going to grow. And it's so crazy because the Pope literally has a dragon on his head. Okay, he literally has a, a seraphim dragon on his head. Alright, well I thought the thing on his head was supposed to be Dagon. It's supposed to be a fish. All you're doing is proving a point even more. Okay, a fish slash dragon is a sea monster. It's a sea dragon. It is the same thing. God uses the same imagery to explain the same stuff. Alright? So the Pope is definitely one of these heads. Alright? If you... Once this Pope gets... You know... Once this Pope dies... It's just... Another one's just gonna grow right in his place. Alright? That's more... Extremely dangerous. You can't kill something or get rid of something. There's just gonna be two more things in its place. Get what I mean? Okay, that's just a philosophy I'm saying. It's the same thing with octopus, Rahab. If you, if you get rid of some body parts of, of Satan's body, he's just going to grow more. Alright? More people are just going to get born and become evil. Alright? And But the, there's a good side to this. Okay, God uses the same philosophy when it comes to his body. Okay? 
Now I'm going to talk about the glorified body of Christ. Okay. Um, you can't get rid of Christ because there's gonna, just going to be more people who believe in him and he's and he's just going to grow extra body parts. You get It's the same philosophy. It's just flipped. Okay. Okay. And God uses the philosophy of these people turning into body parts for the body of Christ. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's so crazy because it's still the same philosophy. It's just flipped. In real life, a lot of these disciples, 12 disciples, they got beheaded. And God is like, go ahead and cut off their head because I'm just going to grow more heads from their bodies. Okay, get what I mean? There's just going to be 10 more people who believe in Christ from these from these sacri- martyrs. All right, get what I'm saying? And that literally was what happened. Okay, so people saw this happening and they, some, most people just laugh at it and said, oh, you know, ha ha ha, the Romans, whatever, whenever they martyred people, they thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but some people, they were actually became encouraged and became another head. Okay, to replace these heads. You guys get what I'm saying? All right. And whenever Satan tries to destroy, to cut off a head of God or an arm or body part of God, of God, some more will just grow, and that explains why in Christ He makes animals clean. It's not just you, but being able to eat pork or not. All right, this is about through Christ you can grow extra body parts only through Christ though. That's why you know through Christ these an- unclean animals became clean. Through him you can grow these extra body parts. And again, that is why that is why the, if you read the Bible, the body of Christ has seraphims. They are serpentine they are the good part of these sea monsters that grow body parts okay and people don't like that the body of christ has dragons in it okay good dragons in it seraphims are obviously good dragons and that is why that the body of christ has to have seraphims because he can grow extra body parts now all right and his dead body, through his dead body, he made the body of Christ, which is the people. He uses the philosophy, this this philosophy, to explain the body of Christ. All right, he gave up his body, so we can come out of it. All right, his through his dead body we rose. All right, You're, and we represent the body of Christ on earth that is holding everything together, that is making up the sea and the waters and the heavens. The thing is, the other body, okay, is the people too, all right? There are two bodies at war here at all times. It's the body of Christ, it's the people who believe in Christ, and it, and, and then the opposite, opposite of that is anyone outside of that. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter if you're Hindu, it doesn't matter if you're Buddhist, it doesn't matter if you're in, in, in a, any other false religion, you're already a part of Leviathan, okay? You make up the pieces, the legs, the arms, and the heads of this dragon. All right, you. It's a. It's the. And when it says the war between two nations, okay, the nations. It's talking about the countries, but you have to. There's always a war, a a ongoing battle between these two bodies. Okay, these two bodies, the body of the dragon and the body of Christ, are always conflicting with each other on earth and how do you get rid of the bodies you're supposed to bring that body into your body into the body of christ you have to come get people to convince them on their own free will okay to come out of the body of Satan into the body of christ okay that's how you defeat the enemy really you're not supposed to physically be hurting anyone you obviously this is why in the book of job it says leviathan no hook can can catch leviathan okay there's another reason why it says that no hook can catch leviathan because leviathan is everyone okay it's not this is talking about spiritual warfare not physical warfare all right you have to convince people to come out of leviathan and come into the body of christ all right there's two bodies at war there's this is i'm going to say this again i already said this in a previous video 
That's why the Battle of Armageddon is called the battle between two stones, okay? Or two bodies. Two lands, because lands are stones, all right? Or the battle between two giants, okay? Because the body of Christ, if there's a bunch of people, then if you would put them together and make a big giant, right? And by the way, that's what the glorified body of Christ means, because glorify means to make big. It means to make into a giant. So that's also what the Battle of Armageddon is. It's a battle between two giants, two giant bodies for two different gods. Also, this is this philosophy behind David and Goliath. Okay, this is talking about these two bodies. All right. Now, the Goliath represents the body of Satan. There's more people. This is prophetic minority. This is, again, God telling you that most people are going to fall. All right, most people, the body of Satan is very, 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 very big. It is giant. Okay, the body of Goliath represents the body of Satan. It is way bigger than the body of Christ. That doesn't mean it's more powerful. That doesn't mean it's not going to fall. All right, just because most people are following Satan doesn't mean God's going to be bending any rules. It just means more people are going to hell. All right. You, you just because it's normal <laughs> sin Satan has made sin normal that doesn't mean you're not still going to go to hell okay just because it's normal to scream up and down my body my choice doesn't mean that you're not God's going to start bending the rules just because it's normal to date and have sex with a bunch of people doesn't mean God is going to bend the rules it just means more people are breaking the law and more people will fall so David and Goliath is talking about prophetic and minority. Just because there's more of you doesn't mean that you're not. God isn't going to send you to hell. Okay, very important. All right, so please think about this, guys. And thank you.